Welcome to Somerville Neighborhood News. We're continuing the conversation about citywide construction projects with Nick Schoenberger from the planning department. He works as a economic development assistant. And Eric Mace, who is a construction public information officer. Welcome to the both of you. Yeah, thanks, thanks. for having us. Um, Erica, with um, the different city staffers who are on the ground handling the nitty-gritty details of all the various construction projects, mm -hmm. um, how do you work to synthesize the updates with all the construction and planning with the community? Sure. Um, so it's incredibly collaborative and very dynamic, fast-moving world, this construction communications. Um, my role is newly created because, as we're all aware, the city of Somerville is undertaking an amount of, immense amount of construction in the next couple of years. So uh, we wanted to beef up staff, particularly in communication, so that folks know what's going on and feel they're equipped to be able to respond and plan around that and just know about the upcoming disruptions. So in my role, um, I work on a couple of projects right now. So for example, the Somerville Ave Utility and Streetscape Improvements Project, which is kind of that whole big event that many of you are probably familiar with going on in Union Square right now, um, as well as the Green Line Extension, which is not technically a city project, but um, is obviously uh, involves the city in such a huge way that it's something that our residents need to know about, as well as projects like the high school rebuilding, um, which is a little bit more of a contained work zone, but just a lot of people are really interested in the progress on that, so just making sure that they're kept up to date. Um, but each project has its own, has a project team with the project manager, there are city contractors, um, there are designers, there are planners, there's a whole host of folks who are involved, and typically uh, for each project we'll have a weekly meeting where we check in with pages long agendas to just go over kind of the critical items that are coming up around construction, scheduling issues, various uh, kind of uh, issues that arise around that and just kind of planning what the next coming weeks and months look like. So I attend those. Um, I do my best to kind of distill what the public will need to know um, and kind of think through who needs to know what and how can we tell them in the best, most efficient, most effective way possible. So that's kind of on a weekly basis. Um, obviously some issues are a little more urgent. Public safety is obviously a huge concern for us. Um, it's an urgent priority, so if something comes in that needs to be resolved immediately, um, I think it's really important. We all work really collaboratively and um, kind of have a good workflow so that if something comes through we can, you know, we have contacts at Somerville Police or mm -hmm. um, traffic and parking, we can really kind of literally like kind of shoot a text over and make sure an adjustment is made in the field and respond accordingly. Um, and kind of along those lines, I would say the flow of communication is two way. So I am kind of intaking this information from the construction teams and figuring out how to share that with the public. But we're also taking in information from the public because there really are boots on the ground. They're the eyes and ears um, who are living the reality of it every day. So. Uh, we encourage and welcome the feedback from the public so that we kind of understand what the reality is looking like so that we can respond and adjust accordingly. We were talking with Jesse Moose earlier mm -hmm. in the other segment, and yeah. he's, he's looking at social media. Um, yeah. Is that something that your office is also doing? Yeah, um, you know, we wanna make sure that we're well informed and have a pulse on what's actually going on in the field, so, um, you know, people kind of get in touch in various ways and use different channels, so we want to make sure that that um, we're doing our best to, to stay up to date on that. And what's what's the best way for um, the public <coughs> to be in touch with, with um, is it your office that they mm -hmm. should be in touch with? Is it 311 that they should call? Both great options. Mm -hmm. um, I would say our constituent services staff is incredible and we work really close with the, closely with them to make sure they know um, the major impacts that are coming up in that. If folks call them or email them with questions that they are equipped to respond um, with the same information that I would provide. Um, we also, I started in this role about nine months ago when we kind of took on additional staff to support 
uh, this increase in construction. Um, and at that time, we established a new external facing email, which is simply construction at summervillema.gov, which is a, a resource that folks can email. And that's sort of a multidisciplinary uh, distro with folks in communications and community engagement, with engineering staff, um, with folks in uh, planning, it's just to make sure that we have a variety of eyes on it and understand how to, how to tackle the issue. And Nick, you deal primarily with businesses, business outreach. That's right. So how's the business outreach going? Yeah, uh, it's been uh, something we do on and on. Uh, as we hear of the new developments coming out of the construction projects, whether it is related to the GLX um, or other projects throughout the city, including Summerville, Summerville Ave, Streetscape Improvement Project, you know, when we have that information, we want to make sure that those businesses are getting that information as soon as possible. Uh, so that's block walking, um, being out there, sharing uh, the information directly with the businesses. Uh, our construction liaison, Jesse Moose, who you talked with previously, uh, has been really great about, about being out there. Um, but also our community partners, uh, business um, community partners like the Main Street organizations, mm -hmm. um, they've been, done a great job to really uh, get folks in the same room and uh, work with the city staff to be able to present those upcoming uh, changes or just details of, of what the project's gonna be. Um, similarly, we have a construction specific business newsletter, uh, which is a great channel if folks are, who are not necessarily uh, getting the construction newsletter that we have. Um, well, for one, I would recommend that you do sign up for that. Um, but ours will also have uh, some more of the kind of the workshops or the programs that the city will offer, um, whether that's our uh, small business coaching program, which is uh, designed really to address some of those businesses that have been impacted by construction, uh, or just a workshop coming up uh, related to you know, construction impacts this is something we did uh, last year for two different times for folks. We, we knew this was coming, right? That there were gonna be impacts and, and that construction was going to be happening across the city. So uh, to try to, try to think proactively about, you know, what can I do as a business owner, you know, now uh, or six months before, or even right in the thick of it now uh, to prepare my business for these impacts, you know, is it, talking with my landlord, uh, is it talking with, um, or taking out an insurance policy, um, depending on, on what the, the issue is. Uh, so we felt that that's the feedback that we got from the businesses was that that was very helpful. Um, and then similarly, we're gonna be, we've done uh, placemaking events. You know, how can we still, how can we turn these um, construction sites into um, less of an eyesore and more of an opportunity, really, to, to say, hey, this is, these are the businesses that we go to on, on a regular basis that we love and, and want to continue to support. You know, how can we be creative in, in ways to involve the entire community in, in remembering that and, and you know, continuing to frequent those businesses? Erica, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I would just echo Nick that uh, from a communications perspective, supporting businesses through these upcoming disruptions is a major priority for the city. Um, this upcoming series of bridge closures is sort of unlike anything that we have dealt with before. And given their locations, particularly, you know, with the Broadway bridge closure, um, which is going to affect Ball Square uh, and Magoon Square, all the way potentially down to Powder House. So um, important business districts, obviously Union Square as well. Um, it's definitely a key talking point of ours. So when we're communicating about upcoming construction, it's not just detours and, um, you know, it's going to be frustrating for a while, but it's really kind of making sure that folks understand that this is going to hold some real consequences for our local businesses and that it's really going to be up to all of us to pitch in and come together and make sure that we're supporting them through these disruptions. Um, so one thing that we partnered with Nick's office on was this citywide campaign. It's our loyal to local campaign. Um, just kind of, again, trying to rally folks to be intentional about where they uh, send their dollars over the next couple years, frankly. Um, and if you can, we would hope that you would consider supporting your local businesses, restaurants, shops, whenever possible, um, just because 
it's going to be a tough time for all of us, but um, we love them. They love you. <laughs> so yeah. let's make sure that we're supporting them. And um, did you? Yeah, um, so that's hashtag loyal to local. Um, <laughs> I'll throw that out there. The uh, number two? The, the number, number two. two. <laughs> um, and we've already seen a lot of businesses kind of adopting that, which is super exciting for us. Um, and, and for other folks who may have questions in the community about, hey, what's this? Um, this is really something we, we're collaborating on with those businesses that are, uh, that are being impacted, but across the city as well. Excellent. And any, any further ways that commu the community can engage with your offices to you know, support local business or to get construction updates or just be in touch? Yeah, and Nick spoke earlier about the construction newsletter, which is uh, a weekly newsletter summarizing um, upcoming construction, which I write. <laughs> so it goes out every Friday. Um, and it just kind of summarizes the major impacts that folks should look out for in the coming week. Um, so you can go to somervillema.gov slash construction and there'll be a button and you can just sign right up. Um, let's see, we also have a couple events coming up, um, some specifically for businesses. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah, forum? so we have, um, we have a forum coming up, a business forum at Soundbites, March 14th, Thursday at 2 p.m. Uh, it's going to be a chance for businesses, to, business owners to, to come and really share what the impacts have been so far, what their biggest concerns are, but also to think creatively of how we can address, you know, maybe the fear of, of coming to an area that's going to be under construction and, and what creative ways we could think of um, to, you know, uh, either partner with other businesses to provide, um, you know, in, interesting deals or, or uh, just marketing campaigns that will help to really Again, calm those fears and say, hey, we're still here uh, and we'd love to see you here. And have you, have you done forums like that before? Yeah, so I would say we often do uh, conversations around, you know, what's happening in, in business in a certain business mm -hmm. district with, again, the Main Street organizations who both in Union Square Main Streets and East Somerville Main Streets um, on a monthly basis. But, but as far as from the city side, uh, we have done... Uh, I want to say it's three forums before, uh, not specifically business focused, but um, more for the community as a whole about, you know, when GL what the GLX project is looking like at this point, um, suburb lab streetscape improvement um, specific um, meeting for the, for the community. Um, I don't know if there's another one that I'm not thinking of, but we did have one in um, Winter Hill recently, but that was more related to um, just uh, planning for long, longer term and not necessarily related to, to construction. We also have a public meeting coming up to discuss the Washington Street Bridge closure, which mm -hmm. is uh, the underpass near McGrath Highway is expected to close uh, starting in April for seven to eight months. So obviously the Broadway Bridge is a huge, uh, you know, year long closure and it's the first, but shortly following is going to be the Washington Street closure. So. Um, we held two public meetings talking about the Broadway closure back in the fall um, on the west side, so we want to make sure that we are really being equitable and make sure that we're getting out to folks all around the city. So our next meeting is uh, March 13th at the East Somerville Community School, um, and we'll just be kind of talking through the upcoming detours, um, how we're going to help mitigate the impacts, and hear from the community on that. So. That's one date to look out for. Um, and then obviously March 22nd is sort of our D-Day for the Green Line Bridge closures. So really just encouraging folks to make sure that they have educated themselves on what the detours are going to be, thought through your own kind of personal travel routes that you take, how might you adjust those, um, you know, thinking through can you allot extra time to your commute, especially for the first couple of days or weeks while the new traffic patterns settle in, just kind of taking ownership of your own experience and making sure that, that you're equipped to, to react accordingly. So mass.gov slash TLX is kind of the shortest URL I'll throw out. But, um, <laughs> all the maps are there, schedules are there, um, as well as some exciting things too, like the latest designs for our new stations in Somerville for the Green Line and um, fact sheets about the community path. So I think uh, 
relatedly, it's kind of good to just keep in mind that it's going to be disruptive, but it's all going to be for a greater good in the end. For an, an improved Somerville. Yes, yeah. hugely. So, <laughs> I mean, one of the, the major um, stats that folks have shared that always surprises me is right now about 15% of our residents are within half mile of a subway stop. But once the Green Line extension is completed, that'll shoot up to 85%. So it's just a huge project for, um, you know, advancing our goals around tr transportation equity. Um, it's going to be major for climate resiliency and greater economic opportunity for everyone. So. All right. Well, Nick Schoenberger and Erica Mace, thank you for joining me. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having us. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you as these uh, construction projects take shape and as you know, as we know more once they're actually all in, in full swing. Yeah, sounds good. Happy to come <laughs> back. All right, thank you.